A reading from our epistle text. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a word that uh, I think all of us have used at one time. And to me, it's a word that uh, is worse than a word of curse. It's worse than the things that you got your, your mouth washed out with soap for. They still do that, right? No. No? Well, then we must be doing it wrong. <laughs> um, and, what this, and the reason is because the word meant to be ambiguous is really a confession against something. So brace yourself because I'm going to say it. Spiritual. That's the word. Spiritual. Or spirituality. I see you're not too upset. Let me put it in context of like this. I wouldn't say that I'm religious. I would say I'm more spiritual. Which is just another way of saying I'm agnostic. That's really what that means. Or, for the people who take spirituality more seriously, they raise from the agnostic into the levels of just being a pagan. In other words, there might be a God, but also I like trees and flowers and things that live in trees and, uh, and basically some sort of karma. Uh, that's, that's the main tenets of, of, of pseudo-American paganism. And I mean, honestly, that same spiritualism has snuck into Christianity. You, it doesn't, you don't have to look very far on Facebook to find a Lutheran who posts a picture about karma. Because we all like that idea. Right? What goes around comes around as long as it's not coming around to me. We like that. We like that type of spiritualization. That people get what's coming to them. As long as, you know, me and karma are on the right side. And then again, if you elevate it once more, you get an even worse and more heretical thing. The spirituality where you believe in God and you believe in Christ, but you believe so much in His sovereignty that He has nothing to do with humanity. That God is so sovereign that ultimately, and this, and this ultimately would lead to what's called theistic evolution. It, later, it would. Where God basically gets the ball rolling and then um, he, he watches it like a movie. Or worse, he views the world as a chessboard, moving pieces where he would. And between him and the devil, they're playing a spiritual game. The, danger, the most dangerous of all is not the agnostic spiritualist, it's not the pagan spiritualist, it's the Christian spiritualist. That is the most dangerous of all. Because to think of God up there and uh, up there and that He uh, is looking at us as insignificant uh, uh, beings and just watching us as he would a picture show, well then, that really lends no purpose, no reason for God. Further, it gives us no reason for us to exist other than 
God is a big kid with a magnifying glass. And we are the ants. Or God is an ego, egomaniac who just wants us to praise him and praise him and praise him until we die. And hopefully we have praised him enough to where we can go to heaven. Now, that's not our God. But you can see how that is the most dangerous of all spirituality. It's Christian spirituality. Because here's, here's the, the truth. The God that we have is a God of the dirt. The God that we have is a God who would roll up his sleeves. The God that we have is the God who would enter into the pig pen by way of the, the, the nativity. Who would enter into the pig pen with us, born of the Virgin Mary. The one who would have every single experience that we have had and then some. When you think about Christ and His incarnation, you cannot think outside, well, we should not think, or we should not spiritualize, Christ outside of both His divinity and His humanity. In every way, He has endured what you have endured. That's God, mind you. Not the God of, of up there looking down, but a God who would actually get involved. A God who would actually take on flesh and, like I said, roll up his sleeves. Every pain that you have ever felt, he has felt. He has mourned over lost loved ones. He was sick when he, when he took in the woman of perpetual bleeding. His forgiveness came out and her illness came into him. When he touched those lepers, how, how else can we uh, describe or understand the, the text that says, He who knew no sin became sin for us. Not committed sin, worse. He was sin. He knows what it means to be sick. He knows what it means to live every day preaching and teaching with the one who is going to betray him every single day. He knows what it means to be falsely accused. He knows what it means well, he knows what politics does. He knows how things can be manipulated into a false guilty verdict. He knows what it means to literally hurt, just like you. He knows what it means to be tempted. He has felt pain. He ate food. He drank water. He slept. He arose. He was crucified. He died. You cannot name me one experience that God has not had that you have had. And that makes God closer to us. That makes God not only an approachable God, but an approached God. That God would approach us by sending His own Son, His only begotten Son. That is a, that's a sacrifice in and of itself. That's a sacrifice before the sacrifice. Here, here is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him.
Clearly, they didn't get the message. But that's what's beautiful about Christianity. That's what's wonderful about Christianity. Is that when we pray, and when we meditate on Scripture, we don't do so hoping that God will hear us. We know that He has human ears that can hear. We know that, 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 that he, has, uh, he still has wounds in His hands and in His side that still pour out mercy for us. We know that there is the Son of God who knows one thing that you have not known and yet have known, and that means to die. God knows what it means to die. Because He did it. Christ died. And so in no heretical way did the divinity of, God, of Christ poof and leave the humanity of Christ to suffer and then went back in during the resurrection just skipping the bad parts, you know. Of course not. There is no dividing. God feel, felt and know, knows what it means to die. And because of that, we can have that comfort. We can have the comfort to know that God knows everything that we have gone through, and yet He is still our advocate. He still hears and, and uh, intercedes for us to the Father sends His Holy Spirit in the waters of baptism so that we, not only when we experience death, we, can, we will experience death in much the same way Christ did. That even though we die, and I love the grammar in this, yet shall we live. That puts your death on the cross and you sitting for your entire life in the three days before you die and you leave the tomb. The, bur the, the worst thing that can happen to you every morning is that you wake up. Everything else Christ is taken care of. And so when it says in our text, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. It's true. There is no new temptation under the sun. There is nothing that you have endured that others have, in not, that have endured, have not endured, have endured. There is nothing that you have suffered that humanity elsewhere has not suffered. There is no sin that you have committed that has not been committed before. You have not suffered in any unique way. It's only unique to you. And that's okay. That's what we understand as experience. But what gives us hope and the ability to stand firm when we're being tempted is that Christ was too. In every way, Jesus Christ was our brother, is our brother, and yet our Savior. And so He will not tempt you beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will provide you an escape that you may be able to endure it. And so what is that escape? Death. That is how you escape temptation. You die. But because of what Christ has done, He is not a God that's far off, but He's a God who's very near. And in that very nearness, we, we understand the forgiveness of sins. And we understand that 
while we live in this life of temptation, there is more. There is an end to the temptation. And the end of the temptation is your death. And yet, though you die, yet shall you live. So when you die, you won't die. Or as I say in regards to baptism, if you die before you die, you won't die when you die. Christ has taken care of it all. Incarnate. And one day, while we are enduring now, one day, you will escape it. Because Christ has already provided the way. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.